workshop today we've got this uh, big old Scots pine. This has been clutter in the nursery up for several years now. Originally collected in the south of France, uh, we've just left it for several years to establish and do its thing. Uh, two years ago Kevin Wilson gave this a basic styling for me. Uh, he just pulled some of the main branches into place and just roughed it out for me. Since that time it's gained a bonsai pot, obviously the wires come off, it's grown nicely, you can see we've got good dense thick foliage uh, on nice stout little branches and the wire came off over the summer obviously so now it's ready for a little bit of a tidy up. Now what I could do is just recreate the original design but since that was done there's been some dieback in the bark and I think it there's a possibility we could compact this tree and reduce it to some degree. It's now mid-autumn which is an ideal time for doing this work because Scots Pines branches thicken up quickly so the wire can't stay on too long but what we're going to be able to do by doing it this time of year is ensure that the wire probably stays on until the latter part of the summer next year giving it the, pro the, the most amount of time that we can to fix in position. bonsai tree is ever created in one uh, in one working it's a progression that takes uh, many many years typically and when you're dealing with Yamadori like this tree uh, the initial work you have to do particularly with Scots Pines is to compact the foliage typically when they're collected the foliage is long thin and leggy and it tends to flop and hang down but here you can see even without wire most of the foliage here is holding itself up if we look a little closer you can see that all the branches are of a reasonable thickness most are three two and a half three four mil so they're going to take wiring quite well detail now here you can see uh, a big area of shari or deadwood this piece here was originally sawn off when it was collected it was probably the larger part of the tree and since that was done several years ago this area has all died back naturally and also recently we found that this area had died off as well. So looking at the, the side of the trunk here, you can see we've got deadwood running probably over half the distance of the trunk. And this elbow is what we're hoping to bend. Now my primary concern about that is uh, the way the roots are configured on this tree, it kind of can't, we can't really change the angle of inclination significantly uh, and the thing I like least about this is the way that this big sort of trunk here more or less is parallel to the soil which is never a good look in bonsai so thankfully this wood's died back on its own that means we're going to be able to take some of the dead material out there and get rid of some of the bulk because as you can see that's a big chunk of wood and bending that it's not going to be particularly easy however once we remove a good chunk of wood from there we should be able to just draw that trunk down a little bit and then by manipulating those secondary branches at the top that's what I'm hoping we can use to uh, actually compact the whole design so looking at the other side you can see here We've got a really nice base on that, as good as you're ever going to get with a Scots pine that's collected from the wild, of course. Uh, we've got some old natural shari in here, some callus tissue, uh, nice bark. We've got this nice little dog leg here where a branch has disappeared at some time in the dim and distant. And here we've got the big elbow, come all the way through here until finally we get to the two branches that are supporting all the foliage and here again you can see where a big piece has been removed in the past and looking at the tree from this angle you can see that that upper trunk section running parallel to the soil is not particularly attractive so I just want to get a little bit more fall on that and also taking a closer look at this part of the tree you can see here where this branch is removed we've got some wood here we can get rid of because that's kind of creating this massive uh, massive distance across here and where this bark has died off on top because there was a branch here that's long gone if you can look carefully this sort of uh, slightly darker color material 
is all dead and some places in here you can see where this was hit in the mountains because it's all been split and there's old dried resin and so on and so forth through there so I'm quite confident we're going to be able to remove some wood from here without even going close to or touching the live material now what happens with that wood when we start to bend it remains to be seen as always because you can never uh, you know we don't have the benefit of x-ray eyes but once we get rid of some of this bulk and I'm not going to thin it down to nothing uh, it's quite feasible that a tourniquet is going to pull that the, the small distance that uh, that I need so the first thing I'm going to do is start pulling this uh, pulling some of this dead wood out of here doing this type of work does require a little patience but by using hand tools uh, we can be sure that we're working with the tree and we're not going to get into anything that uh, that we shouldn't. Fortunately these tools they just follow the grain and because Scott's Pine is nice and soft obviously it's easy to just uh, sort of take that, peel that, run it through. Sometimes you'll find the wood, particularly the darker wood, doesn't peel very well because it's old, it's dry and it's packed full of resin. Once you get to this sort of younger wood which you can see is more yellow that will peel uh, a lot easier. Another tool that's very useful for this type of work are these type of hook knives. As, as you can see there, it's got a hook, it's got a blade all the way around so we can get in there with that and you can see that's really good at picking up fibres and chasing that through. Uh, like I say, it cuts, on, it cuts on the side and on the end so these are really, really useful tools for thinning down dead wood like this. Obviously in the past this uh, this trunk has been bent because most of this was dead wood, dead and shattered uh, with old resin and bark inside it. So we've not actually touched anything alive here because all of this wood was dead. And with that bulk removed, and we've also thinned this little piece on the end to some degree, the next thing I'm going to do is turn my attention to uh, repositioning this trunk. This is a turnbuckle an eight millimeter screw, uh, screw tensioning device so we've got this little dead stub up here and as you can see we've got some copper wire around there that's all pulled in nice and tightly uh, and that goes into the, the loop end of that and then on the bottom end way down under here you can see we've got a screw in there and then we've got double stranded copper wire two mil copper wire attached to that so coming back here what is important when using turnbuckles is to try and get the pull at the angle of the pull correct for the direction you want the uh, trunk to go into so if you're not familiar with the use of turnbuckles for bending branches they're a simple device used in fencing for tensioning wire so what we have is this frame with a left and a right handed thread so in order to put tension on this wire all we need to do is twist this in the right direction of course so as we turn that, that will start to gradually put pressure on this. One end is a loop, one end is a hook. This end is tied in nice and tight to this dead wood. Uh, I've grooved this wood so that it can't slip because otherwise it might have a tendency to slide. So the whole thing needs to be set up very carefully and accurately and there's going to be a great deal of pressure on this at some point. Now these turnbuckles are incredibly powerful and they could very easily snap this trunk with this setup that I've, uh, that I've got here but you can see we're no more than finger pressure as I'm turning that, that trunk is just beginning to come now I don't want to pull that too hard we'll just give that a little twist, give it a rest, give it a twist you can bend big trunks like this very easily over an extended period of time you can also do it very quickly, if you do it too quickly you're going to break it so uh, do pace yourself and take it little by little constantly inspecting the dead wood uh, and, and the part that you're actually bending because most of this force ends up in a very small area of the trunk so just go easy and steady and keep an eye on what's happening all around as you increase the tension on this wire I've now pulled this turnbuckle as far as it'll go so you can see we've had this much movement on the uh, on the trunk so far so the top part of it this end has moved down about two and a half inches now in order to uh, extend this so I can get some more uh, movement again what I've done 
was a coach bolt in here into this dead part of the tree and put another wire on from my original anchoring point and that means that now I can release this this will hold the tension I can shorten this original wire and then uh, I can gain some more movement on this turnbuckle to pull the trunk a little bit further that I need so now twisting this in the opposite direction you can see this is loose and all the tension has gone over onto this wire so now what I can do is back this all the way back out again shorten the original wires and then begin to re-tension it and pull it further and then when I finish that I can then tighten this wire down some more to hold it where I need and remove the turnbuckle uh, and it, it'll have done its job so now I've shortened this original pulling wire and we've tightened this up at the top here so now I'm as I begin to tighten this turnbuckle you can see the secondary wire starting to come loose again which means the transfer uh, of, of strain has gone back onto this original pulling wire. Now obviously as I said there's a lot of tension on these be careful because if you don't set this up right or something breaks this end's going to come up and it'll uh, if you're in the way it'll take your teeth out so do be aware of that and be careful but as I'm tightening this you can see this coming and this is getting looser and looser so I'm nearly where I want to be. I've now finished with the bending of this trunk. As you can see the turnbuckles have gone. I've got one in the permanent securing wire here and another one over here. By having two anchoring points that helps to spread the load uh, because obviously with too much load at one point it's quite possible that that can break or pull out. So with two points that's a little added security. In bending this we've been keeping an eye on this elbow no bark has cracked, opened up, no dead wood uh, has split. So the fact that this was bent in the mountains previously has obviously helped us so we're already going in the direction that it would have gone in the past. It would be possible to bend this further, perhaps in the years ahead, but for what I have envisaged for this tree, I'm quite happy with this and with a slight change of angle in the pot when, uh, when the styling is finished, I think that uh, we're gonna get away with this. And I think having gone from parallel to now you can see there's a nice fall on this branch. So I think that uh, that's gonna enable us to create quite an attractive design with this tree. Having finished the trunk bending the next thing I'm going to do is look at this piece of dead wood from the front I envisage we're not really going to see much of this but the fact that we're not going to see it doesn't mean to say that it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be taken care of I suppose people get quite married to the front of a tree uh, and ignore the rest of it but uh, in my opinion trees have to look good from any angle so in order to do this what we're going to do just take these fibers pick these up with a knife for a hook and peeling these back sometimes they'll go where you want them to sometimes they won't but you just have to be patient work through this and then what we'll do is give it a little burn and then blow over it with a sandblaster and hopefully that should come up looking quite natural Okay, so at this point we've finished the bending of the trunk on this tree and as you can see just underneath the main trunk there has gone from a relatively parallel position relative to the soil to having a nice fall on it. 
from that point we've then got these two two branches that you can see here that carry all the foliage and using a turnbuckle and an eye and some uh, some wire I've managed to pull those in the primary branch has gone higher now which will give us a little bit more uh, a little bit more height and the secondary branch is going to come around and give us the first branch here and sort of the first part of the apex here everything's been wired I've now decided that we've got a front on this tree here hereabouts originally all of the foliage was more or less above this uh, this upper part of the trunk but now we're going to be able to wrap that around it so that's where the reduction in height overall on this tree is coming and it's uh, going to look quite a bit uh, more dynamic plus we just get a sensation of the deadwood that's uh, going on over here that we've created